Now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body, like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature, think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit, think about the things that please the spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. And again, that was Romans chapter eight, verses one through six. Please don't forget to uh, put in your, um, send your prayer request to the host. Um, and you are, uh, you'll be first in the hands of Elder Powell for praise and worship, followed by um, Sister Alex Burkett um, and Sister Roberta Jones in that order. Say amen as they come. My hallelujah belongs to you. 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 You deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it, you deserve it, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. Thank you. All of the glory belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. And my hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Cause you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. And all of the glory belongs to you. Yes, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you, God, yes. All of the glory belongs to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. If we could all go into prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, I have never felt adequate 
worthy enough to bring a word to your children, but yet you've called me. So I pray that you bind the doubt and the nervousness and continue to speak to me like you've been speaking to me. Lord, and the title of that's on the um, consecration calendar and on the consecration programs is restoration. And Father, I pray that this message brings just that. I pray that you continue to be with me and every person who's listening right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank God. Amen. Right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I pray that y'all are really praying for me and praying with me because I'm not going to lie. When I looked at the calendar um, for the first time when the program came out, I actually like cut off the program. Like I just closed the whole program because I thought my computer just went weird and my name was just in the wrong place. But of course I was wrong. So <laughs> nevertheless, um, right then and there, the second time I looked at the program, I started fasting and praying. I said, all right, Lord, what you got for me? And we went forth and I pray that um, well, he gave me a word of hope and encouragement. And I pray, I hope that I get, I'm going to do the same. So. So for those of you who are taking notes, the title of my um, message this evening is Your Plant is Okay. And for those of you who are already giving me looks and figuring out why is this the title, I have a subtitle for you. And it is God Knows What He's Doing. I will be coming from Mark 4 and 17, Psalm 1 and 3, and 2 Kings 19 and 30. Um, we're going to go through these scriptures a little bit later, so you don't have to worry about it if you haven't gotten it down yet. So this picture right here is a picture of two of my baby plants. I am a plant mom, and one of my, um, one of my snake plants, Ella, had two babies last year. Um, this picture was taken in June of last year. And I'm going to be talking about the one at the top. Her name is Gabriella, but I call her Gabby. So this was right when I repotted her and she grew for a few months. And this was a picture that I took a couple days ago. Um, I had another picture of her, but I don't know what happened. So for the next few months, she's, she grew as you can see. And, but for whatever reason, she just stopped. Like she hasn't grown since roughly about September October and of course it's January 2021 and me being a plant mom I was upset I was nervous I said oh my gosh did I pot her too soon like did I cut her off what did I do so of course like any other plant mom or any other person who has questions I went to google so um I found another blog with another plant mom and she was talking about um, don't worry about your snake plant. This is a, a snake plant, like I said. She said, don't worry about it. Um, snake plants grow a little bit differently. So they grow for a little while, but then they'll stop. But the reason why they stop is because their roots are growing, are taking time to grow deeper. And they're taking time to grow and become strong before the leaves start to grow. So as I was preparing for my message, I went on and I was going through scriptures. And of course, it led me to Mark 4, 17. And while you guys are reading this, the context of this chapter of Mark 4 is actually the parable of the sower and the seeds. But this specific verse is speaking about the root itself. Now, if you don't have roots, of course, you're going to fall away. But if you go a little bit deeper, you have to remember that it's not about just having roots. It's about having good roots because there is a such thing as root rot. And that can kill your plant as well. So why do I bring up plants? Well, because we're plants too. We are all God's plants and we grow just like you would see a regular plant, just like you saw Gabby. Um, and that's why you see a lot of scriptures in the Bible that are comparing us to plants. So I was led to another verse and I'm focusing on the rivers of water in this verse. And God led me to see that the rivers of water can have more than one meaning, especially depending on how you see it and how you're feeling at the time. So it can mean the changes of life um, or the storms that come through life because water can be still or it can be rough and crashing. Life is gonna come at us in many ways, but it helps us to learn and grow. Another meaning is however, is God in the word or the living word, the living water. Of course, we also need that to survive. 
earth am I going with this? So as I thought about Gabby and her grown, not growing, but she was actually growing with her roots, I wondered how I could apply this to my own life. And because of course, I'm a plant too. So at the end of the year, every year, we always seem to go back and reflect and just look back on the previous year, what we've accomplished, what we had and things like that. And people kept telling me that I needed to reflect and do the same, but I was rebellious. I said, no, I don't, I don't wanna do it this year. 2020 is not the year that I'm gonna reflect. It hurt really bad and I didn't wanna go back. Um, but I realized that it was something that I really needed to do. So I went on ahead and I ripped the Band-Aid off and I started reflecting through writing on New Year's Eve before church. So I remembered, I remembered back in January how I almost died um, from an unknown virus that nobody could figure out what it was, but my pulmonologist has now concluded that I probably had COVID, but we didn't know what it was back then. I also remember feeling the remnants of that same sickness um, in February, but I thought I was still in the month of January. That's how sick I was. I was sick for two months and thought it was all in the same month. I lost a piece of my heart, my uncle Bishop James Gaylord in April on Resurrection Sunday. Um, and I had no idea how I was even gonna live after that because it hurt so bad. Um, the same month in April, I slept on my birthday because I was still grieving and I was also physically alone. So I so said, I'm just gonna sleep through this birthday a little bit. I ended up falling into an abyss of anxiety and I didn't even realize it after reluctantly taking a new job, thinking and I was trying to be excited about it, but for whatever reason, I really couldn't be like that real true excitement. But the rest of 2020 showed me why I could not be excited about that job. I felt alone so many times throughout the year. And in October, I ended up stranded at a hospital against my will and couldn't even contact anybody because I did not have a phone or anything like that. Um, the bills that had skyrocketed after all of my medical conditions had taken turns for the absolute worst. And my confidence had dropped after all of this. I had to use my inhaler. I was diagnosed with asthma back when I was 15 and I rarely use it unless it's like a real hot day in church and we like, the spirit is high, but my chest is like, ooh girls, calm down. Like I rarely had to use my inhaler, but last year for two months, I had to use my inhaler two to three times daily, which is the most I've ever used my inhaler. And then I was put on a second inhaler because of my anxiety and because I had gotten so sick. I wanted to quit every day, period. And if I didn't think 2020 was gonna go out with a bang, the Saturday after Christmas, um, of course you all knew I went down to Portsmouth to visit my parents and I was down there um, for the um, couple of days. But that Saturday after Christmas, once I returned, I received a phone call from my job telling me that while I was gone, there was a COVID outbreak and my entire team was on quarantine. And I ended up having to work by myself and do the job of three people for two weeks. So needless to say, I found myself doing a whole lot more praying. <laughs> and, but in the midst of the praying and coming to God, I realized that I always tried to kind of like clean my mess up or make things neat before I brought it to God. Because I was like, you know what, God, I want to bring it to you. I want to lay it at your feet. But let me just kind of pack it up in a little bowl or something like that. And then I can bring it to you like, because you're the king. But then God showed me something. He showed me that when I'm coming to lay something at his feet, I need to come as I am, period. And he showed me um, real simply, I don't know how you all um, do laundry, but I don't, when, when the clothes are done, I don't like just take one shirt out and take it and fold it up. Like I have to take everything out, lay it up somewhere and then fold it up that way. Um, so he told me that, even like life and everything that you're going through is like that large pile of clothes because I'm the one that I need to take everything out the dryer at once because I think I'm a nice big old superhero and I'm gonna make it from the one plate from the dryer to the place where I'm trying to get to. And I know that my dryer done ate a sock. I done dropped a shirt 
and a pair of pants on the way to where I'm trying to get to. And then it's a sweater in the dryer that I shouldn't have put in the dryer, but I forgot about it. Now it's shrunk. I have all of these problems. And then clearly I just did not make it to where I needed to go with this large pile of clothes. And it's just a trail of clothes. Clearly I didn't make it. I tried though, but God showed me that even with this large pile of clothes, I'm trying to figure out what to do with. You can't leave it in the dryer forever. You can't leave your problems in a corner forever. And you're trying to take out the entire load on your own and put it in your own arms, thinking you're a superhero. But of course, everything is hanging by a thread and you're still trying to find that mask that you lost three months ago when you washed it. Like he said, that God can take care of that pile of clothes even if you fall, even if something is caught in the dry, even if the clothes are falling all over the place and everything is hanging by a thread because your arms aren't big enough to take care of your problems, but his are. So just give it all to him just the way you are. Just take the whole pile out and even if you drop it, he can still take care of it. He can still find that sock. He can still take care of that problem. He can still take care of that shrunken sweater. And that's just a metaphor. So when I finally gave it all to him, just the way it was, not even wrapping things up, but I just was like, God, here's my pile of clothes. He then reminded me of that same January when the church prayed over me during choir rehearsal, when my lungs felt like they were going to burn out of my chest and I, when I had gotten sick. And then right after choir rehearsal, how members were sitting in patient first with me for three hours and I didn't even ask them to do it. And around that same time, one of my sisters had gotten sick and she couldn't even drive herself home. So I drove her home and stayed with her and we ended up having time and finding time to grow closer together. And that same February, I was preparing to see my uncle Gaylord, although I didn't know it was for the last time, but now I realize I have memories of that weekend and I have so many memories of him that I can cherish for the rest of my life. And that resurrection Sunday that he passed away, so many of you guys had showed up for me because I had only called pastor and one other person, but half the church had contacted me before the sun had even set just to check on me. So many people had showed up for me with phone calls and texts and people were bringing me food and they were giving me space to hurt, but yet you all were loving me and people were loving me the best way they knew how, especially in the midst of a pandemic. And I didn't end up sleeping my entire birthday because people were surprising me with online birthday parties. And somehow I was still able to blow out candles on my special day. I started making art again and I allowed myself to open up to people, no matter the outcome, good or bad. And half the time it was bad, but I learned how to open up and I learned how to rest and not just on a special occasion, because especially when you're working and going to church and things like that, you think in your head like, okay, well, on this third Saturday, that's why I'm gonna take that whole, I'm gonna take a time to just go ahead and rest. But we can't do that. We have to rest often because even God rested on the seventh day, not just because he had to, but because he was showing us that we had to. And if we don't rest, then doesn't that kind of seem like we're putting ourselves above God? That's not good. So I ended up appreciating what I had. My faith grew in God and my strength grew and my relationship grew even deeper in God. I grew deeper. My roots grew deeper. And even after everything has happened, I haven't used my inhaler at all since December 9th. So it's been over a month now. And next week, I'll be starting a brand new job that I'm actually officially excited about. So amen and hallelujah, because I've been waiting a very long time for this. So nevertheless, um, at first, I didn't see myself growing or prospering for that matter. Pastor kept saying, and the church kept saying that we're going to get fat. And in my mind, through 2020, I was like, okay, I might be like, I might have got a little pudgy, but I ain't get fat. Like, I don't know where my fatness is. But God then showed me what he was really doing. And I learned that my roots were growing. Okay, now let me to our last verse, 2 Kings 19 and 30. Now, while you guys are reading this, um, the context of this verse is during King Hezekiah's reign in Judah, 
which takes goes back to chapter 18, but I'm not going to go that far. Um, but the king of Assyria had come against Judah, and this was after Israel had gone, had been taken into exile. Once again, they were rebelling against God. But the king of Assyria was going after Judah now, and they ch he challenged Judah in battle even after he started conquering the, some of the towns in Judah. So they were in trouble. And Judah was much smaller than Assyria. But then later in chapter 19, um, the prophet Isaiah had prophesied that the Assyrian king was arrogant and God was going to take him down himself. He also told Hezekiah that in this year, Judah was going to only eat what grew in the land on its own. And in the second year, the same would happen. But in the third year, they would plant and harvest the fruit there. And the remnant who had escaped would put down roots and grow even further. 2020 has been a year, not just for me, but for all of us. And maybe even the years before that. I know um, 2017 and 2018 was probably a, a year. But even though so much has changed and things have been taken from us and we have been challenged, please remember, we are the remnant. Y'all, we have made it. We are the remnant. And because we are still here, because we may not see it now, we might not see the growth now, we are here, we are the remnant, and maybe we only been taken and going after the things that has only been what we got. We just moving with what we got. But in the room, in the year of the remnant, God has shown us that we are still here and we have grown good roots that he's given us and we are gonna be able to grow even further. And I'm gonna pray one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that someone has taken something from your word. I thank you for giving me this word and giving me this opportunity to share hope and encouragement directly from you. Now, Father, I pray that this not only falls on good ground, but this helps our roots to grow further and deeper in you. And I give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to pray, um, Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we ask you to take all the nervousness away, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we have a word for your people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord, give me what to say, when to say it, how to say it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, for your glory, hallelujah, use me, Lord, hallelujah, for your glory, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Hey, mine is more of a question. It said, what is the most precious gift that you can give? The most precious gift you can give is time. Time is the most precious gift you can give because you only get a set amount of it. When you can make more money, but you can't make more time. When you give someone your time, you have given someone a portion of your life that you can never get back. Your life is your time. I have three scriptures, if someone would care to read them for me. Um, Ephesians 5 and 16, Ephesians 1 and 10, and James 4 and 14. For Ephesians 5 and 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. One and one in 10. One in 10 says mm -hmm. that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, on earth, even in him. Four, four and 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the, the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanisheth away. Time is priceless. Time can, cannot be stopped. Once it's gone, it's gone forever. The policeman at the, um, at the White House, at the Capitol, when he went to work, he did not know 
he would not have any more time on this earth. Time is priceless. So we have to, you know, time is critical. We have to be critical and use our time wisely. You know, because God has been so good to us. The Lord God has allowed us a short amount of time to get it right. And how do we get it right? Through repentance. We have to repent of all unrighteousness. And um, we have to, we have, we have to repent of all unrighteousness. So while there is still time to repent, let us children of God get it right. Repent, 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 repent. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your word, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the amount of time that you allow us, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, let us, Lord Jesus, be read our word more, Lord. Let us, Lord Jesus, get closer to you, Lord, Lord. Let us, Lord Jesus, pray more, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let us spend more time with you, Lord Jesus. Let us turn off that TV, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let us, Lord Jesus, look to you, Lord Jesus, not look to anything else but you, Lord, which cometh our help. Our help come from you, Lord, in the name of of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the time you allow us to spend together, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to serve you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for being just who you are. You are God. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the time, Lord Jesus, that we have on this earth, Lord. Our Lord Jesus, help us to use the time wisely, Lord. It is critical. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the time, Lord Jesus, is critical, hallelujah, where the world is going today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, if time is winding up, Lord, hallelujah, soon you're going to correct that sky, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and come back for your people, Lord, hallelujah, let us get it right, right now, Lord Jesus, give us a clean heart, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus, help us right now, Lord Jesus, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord Jesus. More of your spirit, more. More of your anointing, Lord. More of you, Lord Jesus. Help us right now, Lord Jesus, to spend our time wisely in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.